Okay, hey guys, <clears throat> I'm in Prague, and I'm here with Warhorse for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, and I'm really excited because they got some buses over here. They're about to uh, ferry us to a different city. I'm not sure what the city is. If I figure it out, I'll put it here, and uh, basically show us uh, some really cool old medieval buildings that are going to be in the game and show us off the game and apparently some activities afterwards uh, so we're going to get hands on with the game we're going to check it out really excited so far i have had time to explore Prague, so it has been an awesome trip so far and now it's about to get even better because we're going to actually check out the game now so i'll keep you up to date and uh let's do it Okay, you take the guy on the right, I'll take the guy on the left. I have a lot of priests who are there as a They are armored, we are unarmored. Later. I've got my guard here so you guys don't go inside because that's my place, that's your place. Thank you for coming. I hope you had a good trip. Well, wow. I hope those also <laughs> represent me. So if you have a problem with me, I will let them know. <laughs> they will let you know. So but the medieval way. You don't want that, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, I'm, happy, I'm happy that you're here in Kuttenberg, a uh, silver mining city, big part of Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. And it's actually this place here, as we stand right now, where in the uh, announcement video, if you have seen it, where Henry or Tom McKay for the first time is seen and saying, Welcome to KCD2. Uh, Hans Capen, Luke Dale is coming out of that door and welcoming the same way as I am welcoming you right now. 
So this is where everything started, where the road to the release of KCD2, KCD2 started. So that's why our tour is starting here today. It will be a very long day, so I hope you are prepared for that. Don't worry, I have coffee, Red Bulls, everything is there. Proper <laughs> gamers menu. Uh, and we will now go to the gaming area and I will tell you more there. So, let's go. So after we rolled up here, uh, it gave a little intro before we went inside. There was a bunch of computers set up and we got to uh, actually get our hands on the game. Unfortunately, no capture was allowed at that time. Uh, and uh, I think they're going to have some gameplay, a gameplay reveal uh, on the same day this video goes up. So you can check that out. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, uh, the first segment was an opening bit uh, from the game. And uh, I can tell you, it looks great. It sounds great. It's so immersive. Uh, this is obviously an RPG. It's exactly what they said it is. Think of, you know, the high quality storytelling in Witcher 3 and then, uh, you know, uh, ratchet that up even more. It's like playing a movie. It's like playing a Netflix series where uh, the it's there's lo lots and lots of story, lots and lots of dialogue. It really is about uh, Henry and and his journey and all the characters that you meet along the way. So uh, while it may it's a little more directed uh, in, in my experience, and honestly, I think that works quite well for uh, living in the medieval world and immersing yourself. So this first segment, I don't want to ruin it for you, but basically you are uh, with uh, some fellow soldiers that you were with uh, at the end of the first game. And, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of bringing a message. And what's really cool is there's gameplay segments. You take control and you're talking to the individual soldiers and your friends and and you're learning more about them. You play a little dice game, you know, so they have some mini activities that further immerse you. It's not not quite Gwent or something like cards. It's it's this cool little uh, play on liar's dice almost. I really enjoyed it. I was like screwing around with that forever and really immersing myself with these guys. There was, a, uh, you know, a little doggy that was uh, eating. Somebody was cooking. We got to cook with us. So it was just that. It was just so much fun. And, you know, and then Henry and his boy, like, we was just being boys. You know, we were hearing some women up in the distance. We were going through the weeds, seeing if we can catch a catch a glimpse of some boobies or something. You know, it's I, I love it. It's it, You are Henry. You are immersing yourself in the world of what it's like to be, you know, boys, man, grown, coming of age story. It was great. And, uh, and then something shocking happens. And I'm not going to uh, go any further than that because I want you to experience it for yourself and that's what I'm talking about it's like watching a great movie or really playing a great movie um, okay so you got that segment and then they kind of end that segment and then they go a little further into the game and this one was uh, just experiencing one of the side quests and holy shit if all the side quests in this game are anything like this one side quest it's gonna be amazing because I think I in this one side quest, I farted around for like an hour or two, and it was still going. Plenty of story content, plenty of dialogue, all this stuff. 
and a really uh, fleshed out mechanics. So in this one, there was this German guy who was boasting about his sword skills, and I'm terrible with the combat in this game. I'm slowly learning it. After those two segments, I started to get the hang of it. I think you're probably going to need maybe two, three hours in the game before you feel super confident. It throws you right into the combat, by the way, so you're going to be terrible in the opening sequence. But after that, you're, you, you get a hold of it. Now, you, uh, you KCD1 players are going to be a little bit better. But anyways, so uh, so I'm like, yeah, I'm going to challenge this guy. <laughs> Big mistake. You know, he's kicking my ass, and then I'm trying. I'm safe's coming. I'm trying to, you know, beat his ass. Uh, but he's a sword master, right? And so whether you beat him or not, you have all these dialogue options. You can talk to him. Uh, and so while this is going on, uh, some motherfucking assholes show up. Yeah, like, I love to bully assholes. You know, they fucking hate this German guy. They want him to leave, and there's just conflict. Because it's a, a rival sword, uh, you know, place. You know, it's like dojos. You know, it's like perfect Bruce Lee shit. And, and so, like, I ended up siding with him, right? And uh, so we go back. We have a drink. Uh, you know, we're talking about these fucking assholes and how we can get them back. And apparently, you know, he wants to challenge them because they, you know, uh, they're, there's, you know, they're bullies basically and trying to corner the market here on, uh, you know, learning uh, swordsmanship. And uh, but they won't fight him because they know that they'll lose or they're just assholes. Right. And they just want him, uh, to put them out of business and put them through all these restrictions and stuff. And uh, so I we come up, we hatch a plan and the city is so immersive. And the city that we're exploring was the actual city that we were in. Kutahorna, I think, and uh, Kutenberg, and it was awesome. So it was like cool to see similar locations throughout, and they were kind of taking us throughout the city. But so as I was exploring the city, I found uh, their little dojo essentially, and I snuck in, stole the sword, and put it in this other location where you, when you display the sword, it means okay, now we're open to challenges, and they would have never done that on their own. So I had to get that sword in and put it. And I was like, okay, cool. That's a cool little side quest. I thought it would be done. No, it's not done. Now that we have the challenge, now it's time to participate in the games. And we joined. We can join the German guy's uh, dojo, essentially. But it's not as simple as that. You, you can't just join him. He's like, I like you. You join. No, you have to prove yourself. So you have to face his second in command who kept kicking my ass. And I kept losing. And I have to, you know, would uh, go to sleep, eat, and, you know, get my health back up and then fight him again till I finally beat his ass. And then I earned my way into his sword master club. And then uh, after I did that, we went to an actual tournament. And this was like an announcer, and it was like a crowd. And I was like, holy shit, I can't believe this side quest. This is a main quest. This is a main quest in any other game. But I asked, is this a side quest? I said, yes, yeah, it's a side quest. And I was like, holy shit. So then you do this tournament where it's like, okay, they have like three or four guys, and we have three or four guys. And, you know, so... I was on the sideline cheering for the sword master, the German guy, when he went in there. And in my game, he won. But apparently those little battles, you know, depending on who's up and, you know, just it's randomly generated, you can end up losing. Um, but I think that they, they tweak it a little bit so that your next battle is super important. Um, and so my next battle, I was just like, it was intense. I was worried that I was going to fuck it up and let down my new German friend who I drank beer with and hung out with and, and, and fought so hard to be a part of his, uh, you know, sword club. It was just amazing. And um, I won. And, but they were, <laughs> it was going so long that they were wrapping up. It's like, okay, time to do And I was like, no, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm fucking beating this. I'm finishing this. So everybody else is getting up. And I'm like, ah, I'm not doing it. And I, I won. So uh, hopefully when you get that, you can, you can win theirs. But I was totally immersed in that world, in this one side quest that had nothing to do with the overall story, did not advance the main story. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't wait. You know, so, guys, those two quests were uh, convinced me, um, you know, 
uh, to pre-order this thing, to you know, jump into the medieval world. So, so as long as you prepare yourself, it's not this like it's not GTA, it's not Cyberpunk, it's not Witcher Three. It is a, an RPG. You know, granted, <clears throat> interface, cool little old school, you know, interface and inventory system, almost a little esoteric, but I kind of like it a, a little esoteric. Uh, but uh, it's immersive, it's story driven, narrative driven. You're living the life man of Henry and it was a ton of fun so I think uh I think people are fans of, of this time period fans of these locations fans of this type of warfare and these stories you're gonna love it uh it's KCD1 just done what you know what where they wanted to be able to do it and I can't wait for you guys uh to play it and you'll see you'll see yourself now one of the things that I noticed throughout the whole thing was how amazing the fucking music was like you know honestly if the game comes out and it sucks you know somehow by some you know uh face tr tripping uh you know this failure uh the music is still going to be like a 9 out of 10 uh and honestly music elevates some of the things that you're playing the game's not going to be I don't think the game's going to be a huge failure. I'm just saying I know already from hearing it that the music is absolutely wonderful. So I had to get an interview with a composer because I've never got an opportunity to talk with somebody who just makes music up in their head. And I was just so fascinated. I want to know how he did it, where he came up with the music, why the music is so beautiful. And, you know, just tell me, talk to me about this music because I love this music from the time period. And um, sure enough, what was amazing is they had an actual fucking symphony there for us so in this awesome awesome old building this gothic uh, cathedral they had um uh, an actual symphony there and you know there was everything you know violins harps it was just uh, as singers so i actually recorded some of it i'm wondering if the audio is, is good so if it's good enough i might put one or two songs here at the end of this video but this is just a huge um you know info dump of my experience there so you know we got a little bit of a tour of the city and they kind of matched up some of the locations with what they were, were in the game and what they um uh, so it was really really uh fun and exciting to to get out there in one of these older beautiful cities um yeah and i'm excited for the game and the fact that it got delayed they were they were really apologetic they they seemed like uh you know um that it was a big deal to them but to me it wasn't a big deal at all to me i was like yes good i want to get you out of that really big time period I want to get you more time to polish the game I want it to come out you know right the first time so uh, the fact that it's now February I think is good I don't know how busy February is but in 2025 but I think it was a good move and I think you're really going to enjoy the game so uh, guys stay tuned for this one if you're into uh, medieval and RPGs and you are a fan of the Witcher and these kinds of games but you're open to less of a Grand Theft Auto open world where you, you know go anywhere do anything now there's still open sections don't get me wrong like I'm not trying I'm not trying to say it, but I just want to prepare you for a narrative okay plenty of talking you're like oh this talking is boring you're, you're not you're not going to enjoy it because it's like you know this is a fucking story and you talk to a bunch of bunch of people there's just so much dialogue in here it's like watching three amazing movies at once and playing those movies so <clears throat> That's basically uh, my first impressions at uh, the KCD2 uh, event, <clears throat> preview event, and uh, yeah. Okay, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to put the interview with Sir Toby at the end of this one, and then uh, because I have footage from the symphony and the actual performance and an interview with the composer and how, how does somebody come up with this badass medieval music in, in their head, uh, I'm going to make that a separate video, uh, so stay tuned for that one, and then you can just get sort of, if you don't know much about uh, KCD2 uh, Toby goes over it with us uh, together uh, so here's that interview towards the end of this sorry for the audio again I was only I only had one of them um, lost the other one but uh, uh, watch both videos uh, if you're really into this and I think you will be especially uh, some of the beautiful music in the, in the uh, game and thank you so much uh, for watching and uh, I hope uh, I'll see you guys on the next angry joke oh good oh yes let me um Oh, you know what's hilarious?
Mm. Toby, most of my questions are on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have to go by memory. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Angry Joe Show. I have Toby here with me uh, from War Horse, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the brand new game, uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, and why you should play it, even if you haven't played the original. Uh, so tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, first of all, thank you. I was a bit afraid to go here because I, I'm fangirling, of course. <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> you done had fucked it up. <laughs> so good. So far, so good. Yes. Right? Now, uh, really, uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, like in general, is a, is a if, if you want me to be like super um, broad, it's a game about knights, about the Middle Ages, about medieval Europe. Uh, you do not have to uh, play Kingdom Come Deliverance one to uh, um, yeah find yourself in the game and know what to do. We give you the bear necessary information this is you this is your friend this is a letter go and deliver it yeah and the rest is something we will give you slowly but steadily um, in your face kind of but um, yeah it's, it's a direct continuation and it has a very big epic and immersive, immersive story that might be interesting for you guys as well well I will tell you I have played a little bit of it and it is interesting now if you haven't played the first one the first one I will say is one of the uh, most uh, awesome like medieval type of experiences it's you know authentic historically accurate to a certain extent obviously some creative liberties taken do you guys uh, continue that style mm -hmm. in this game do you expand on that in any way mm -hmm, absolutely so exactly as you said we we uh, I kind of have like three pillars it's, it tries to be very authentic realistic so that we are telling a story that really happened mm -hmm. uh, here in, in, in Bohemia in Central Europe uh, so this is all based on a true story, however your story, you Henry, son of a blacksmith, that's a fictional thing. So you can like kind of go through that world and see it by yourself. Then we try to be extremely immersive. So the things you're doing is really, um, you do have to do stuff in order to get stuff. So if you do blacksmithing for instance, then you have to uh, choose the iron, put it into the fire, then whack the iron mm. long enough. If you do it in the right rhythm, Henry mm. will start to whistle, so you know you're doing it nice. right and so on. <laughs> At the end of it, then you have to cool it down. So it sounds a little bit tedious, but the mm. point is not the tediousness. The point here is that we give you the chance to really immerse yourself in how it could have looked like and how it could have worked in the Middle Ages. How does is a sword being a uh, um, uh, blacksmith? How does alchemy work? Is alchemy magic? No, it isn't. It's herbalism. So, mm. yeah, so, so you can it's not an educative game, don't worry, right? It's, it's, it's really just a video game. But we are trying to give you all those different tools uh, to, to find your way and, and to choose what you like to do and how you want to create your Henry or how you want to customize your Henry. And last but not least, it's a huge game. It's like 80 to 100 hours. So That's what like, I was going to ask you. All right. It's a giant, ginormous, it will be a ginormous game. Maybe too big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it is what it is yeah. now. But that uh, you get your money, yeah, worth, right? absolutely. Is that just for the uh, main game, what are there, or is that including side quests and other activities? Well, it's our educated guess right now, so the game is still in production. So, we guess it's something between 80 and 100 hours. If you rush through it, it will nice. be less, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I think for like an I've seen everything at least a bit and tried everything and checked everything, and it's a 80 to 100 hours base game only without the DLCs that are also coming, of course. But uh, the point still is that it's a story-driven RPG, so there's, there's mm. we, we are trying extremely hard, and I, I'm, I'm strongly convinced that we nailed it, that none of the quest is repetitive. Mm -hmm. uh, repetitive. There's really rarely that someone put, sends you on a fetch quest or something. Mm -hmm. Really, Each of those quests should I, either, the main quest, will either tell you about the historical events, those you can't change, those will happen, and you have the chance to influence them and explain how they happen. And all the side quests are the crazy ones, the weird ones, the the, uh, the humorous ones, and so on. And they shall tell you about everyday life in, in the Middle Ages and what the people dealt with, what their problems were, uh, superstitiousness, uh, believing in ghosts, and and the church, and how how faith worked, and so on. Really, and so on. religion yeah. and everything. Okay. But again, Protestant versus Catholic. Yes, kind of thing. exactly, 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 mm -hmm. exactly. That's the point. Yeah. yeah so uh, going from uh, KD one to KD two. Um, in KD1, obviously, we dealt a lot with bandits, kind of learning our place in the world mm -hmm. a little bit, and Henry and leveling him up, essentially. Mm -hmm. So how does KD2, number one, handle all the beautiful bells here from the church? <laughs> Historical um, place, I don't know if right? you can hear it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so 
Um, and we are, by the way, I gotta say, we are in an actual place that's mm. going to be in the game, right? right? Yeah. So this is Kutenberg or exactly. Kutenhora, exactly. if you are um, in, in uh, the Czech, in Czech Republic. Republic. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is absolutely beautiful. You'll see some of it later on here, but and I'm sure some of it is in the game mm -hmm. as well. Right? Of course. But okay, but go, from going from the first game to the second game, where we were dealing with bandits, what kind of problems are we dealing with in the sequel? It's a very good question. So, and in Kingdom Come Deliverance 1, KCD 1, uh, it was really, we always say that, or I say that, uh, Henry grew from boy to man. Mm -hmm. So he lost his parents, his family, uh, his family. Um, his village was torched down and he kind of was dragged into the civil war, he has to find his way and at the end of the game you become a s well, kind of a bodyguard. Yeah, well, yeah, you're at the beginning of the game you are a no one, at the end mm -hmm. of the game you are less, a bit less of a no one, <laughs> yeah. but still a no one, but you get to become a squire. Um, but now, uh, but exactly as you said, it's really dealing with bandits and more rural place. Mm -hmm. Out of different reasons we couldn't tackle bigger things in KCD1. Now we can, the team is bigger. We have this huge medieval city, Kuttenberg, where we are in. And uh, exp I try, uh, sometimes explain it like, Kingdom Come Deliverance uh, 1, Henry was something like the champion of the Sunday League or something mm -hmm. like really minor league uh, mm -hmm. hockey or something like that. And now all of a sudden he's supposed to play in the NHL. Okay, so, uh, so we're going to get actual uh -huh. battles between lords yes. and knights mm -hmm. and, and maybe fully realize the siege battle. Remember mm -hmm. the promise mm -hmm. from the yes. Kickstarter and the, the mm -hmm. first uh, KB1. Are we getting those kinds yes, of yes, things? Yes, 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 yes. You will get on the courts of, you will meet kings, you will see big historical characters, you will see armies, you have to in, uh, infiltrate armies, you are part of a um, um, you are a partisan group because you are trying to sabotage the invading king or the, the one you or Henry thinks is mm -hmm. the bad king and so on. So there's a really it's a deeper, darker story. You will st you're still not a hero, you're still just Henry and you're just part of a group that is trying to achieve something. But you will be put into crossroads decisions where go left, something bad happens, go right, something bad happens. But you will have to understand why bad things happen in war outside the war itself, of course, which is bad, but uh, for instance, tiny spoiler, there's this place where you have to attack that. Mm -hmm. Go straight forward, go with all your gangs, and but you know there's a lot of big gar garnison inside and you endanger your group and maybe the big thing you want to do. But if you torch your village before, which of course is bad, because this happened to, this you, happened to you, and <laughs> now Henry has to sit there and say, okay, damn, what, what do we do? Do I endanger the mission on my, my gang or do I endanger the civilians? So these are really deep, dark Ooh, I love situations it. will be there. And this will then change also, of course, the outcome of the saying. quests. And Branching yeah. choices yeah. is very difficult to do in game development. Mm -hmm. A lot of game companies have tried it. Sometimes it's mostly superficial, that it doesn't actually change anything. It's just one or two dialogue mm -hmm. options. How are you guys ensuring that it actually does change? Mm -hmm. So, as I said, the are there multiple endings to the game. Well, yes and no. I mean, as I said, the historical things need to happen, and you can't change them. Right, right. But uh, there will be uh, in the questing. You can you can tackle with the quest on a different way. So we always tell you what to do, kind of, mm -hmm. but not how. So go and do this. Yeah. But how you do it is really up to you. Do you yeah. sneak in? Do you kill them? Spartacus uh, sword ahead, or do you try to bribe them? Do you try to lure them out? Do you try so? Don't get me wrong, it's not a strategy game per se, but it's really like a very deep role-playing game mm -hmm. where you have to ask yourself, what would Henry do, what, what would my Henry do, what would I do, and try to come up with a solution. And sometimes the um, decisions are minor, you do something and we'll have some just another outcome of the quest maybe, mm -hmm. but sometimes the decision can lead to death of certain characters. Oh. So, um, again, there's no, you can't go wrong, <coughs> there's no like dead end or something. You right. can't F up completely. The thing that's, that's happening is that you're kind of only telling your own story. You get to the same, almost to the same, and the ends are a bit, that's mm -hmm. a, a surprise, but the end, even at the end there's some, some, some surprises, but how you get there, that's the point. Yes. The, the way is the point. Mm -hmm. And as far as immersion, like what I've played so far, I feel fully immersed. I already kind of want to jump on my couch, get it, and like, you know, really immerse myself because I'm walking through the forest. I'm already noticing a wider variety of creatures. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how those teams have expanded from really expanding those experiences? Is there a more variety of uh, mm -hmm. wildlife, mm -hmm. uh, wildlife AI? Mm -hmm. um, another thing, NPC voices kind of seem to have repeated themselves a little bit too 
too often in the first game. Did you guys hire a lot more voice actors? But re hopefully you brought some that really did good performances yeah. in the first game, yeah. like Orlando yeah. and yeah. Charlatan. Yeah. Um, you know, are you guys expanding on those areas? Absolutely. So everything you know from Kingdom Come 1 will reappear in some form of here in KCD2. And it's an absolute evolution of the game, not a revolution. So we don't uh, reinvent the wheel there. We just build up on everything and make it so much more better, better and so much more streamlined and more accessible. Of course, more quality um, uh, voice acting, more characters. I mean, after Kuttenberg in itself has a thousand of NPCs and maybe more. So, but then again, it's, you can't hire a thousand actors yeah. anymore. So, the less important characters will have yeah. repeated, some that's, repeated that's lines. How I'm it works, running yeah. into some repeated lines, but there's more variety. Absolutely, absolutely, okay. with everything. Excellent, and especially with the maps, for instance. So the now we have two maps. So one of them is the uh, more beautiful Trotsky map with a lot of um, like sandstone formation and forest and these kind of very beautiful thing. And the other bigger map is the Kuttenberg map where we are today right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this will be more industrious. There will be silver mines around. There will be like. Um, early fabrics um, like um, um, firms working on that mm -hmm. and, and so on and so on so so we want to even have the variety, uh, variety there in, in the landscapes yeah but also in the people because and here it's a huge city which yeah. attracts a lot of people and this will be also and I'm seeing surprise. a lot more variety in weapons and animations Absolutely. and I really appreciate that how do you get those new weapons and animations where things don't just feel the same how'd y'all do that that's a fun story. So uh, in Kingdom Come One, we had one swordmaster who came to the studio and showed us one, one, <laughs> one guy, and he did all the animations for all the different weapons, which yeah. led to the problem that all of them kind of felt the same, yeah. kind of the same uh, movement sets and so on. Uh, with KCD Two now, we have for each single weapon a dedicated weapon master who nice. came, showed us how it worked, which leads to the uh, point that. Um, now every weapon should feel different and okay. offer you different playstyles. So oh. if you want to go deep in the combat, take the sword and do all these intricate moves and repose and combos and I don't know what. However, if you do not like that, if you're like saying hey, the combat, well everyone likes combat, but if you feel like the combat is too hard or the sword moves is nothing for you, then take a mace or an axe for instance mm -hmm. and whack the enemy on the head. Yeah. Uh, because we have this star thing where you can choose the different angles where to attack, but was weird with the with the maze to stab the enemies, right? right? So you wouldn't stab now, with the yeah. maze. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. so we changed that, good, and I good. think uh, it's just uh, easier to pick up. Uh, in case Dion, we said it's hard, uh, easy to learn, but hard to master. I think yeah. we really okay. nailed the hard to master. Right. But the easy to learn that is <laughs> something learn, yeah. that starts now yeah. in case of two. Okay. So, and there is uh, a bit of bad news that we got recently. I was really looking forward. This was one of my top games of the year, right? And there's really not been a whole lot of really big games this year. So I was hoping this would be the one. But they recently announced it, that they got moved. Mm -hmm. And and tell me a little bit about that. It makes us probably more angry than it makes you guys. Right. So, <laughs> but this even is more angry thing. than you. But so yeah. this is a good thing because we don't want to open the review. You don't fucked it up, yeah. right? Yeah. You're using yeah. that extra time yeah. for what? Yeah. To make it better, right? Exactly. So what you play today is the current state of the build. So I think it's already really, 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 yes. really good shape. The performance is. Uh, really top notch. The only thing, because it's such a huge game, because it's an open world game, we want to get uh, rid of as many bugs as possible, especially of, or, or on the ones that make you angry, right, that make right. the gamers angry. So that's those ones good. need to be gone. If something but, is but that blinking. big of a delay, that's a lot of bug squashing. It's not a big of a delay because we try to release at the end of the year. Yeah. So very close to the end of the yeah. year. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and then the next possible is February because in December no one releases games. Oh, yeah. Then there's Christmas, and in yeah. January most people are still in, on vacation mm -hmm. or waking up from it's kind of a dead New area. Year's. Yeah. Exactly, so it's a dead area. So the next possible is early February. Right. It's the 11th of February. Yeah. But again, makes us angry. However, yeah, sorry. But it's a good thing it, it, because yeah. more time for the game, more polish. My policy is get it right the first time. So thank you so much for talking Huge with pleasure. us. Thank and, you very uh, much. And we'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, everybody. Take care.